Caesar cipher class. Some of these methods have been completely implemented for us already. Um, primarily because either they use language features that we haven't learned yet, um, or they're not really relevant to the concepts we're studying in this unit. Um, and in the interest of time, they're here, so we'll end up with a fun example at the end, but they're not really the main, the main point. Um, if you're interested in the Caesar cipher, or you're interested in seeing where we're heading in the next unit, I certainly encourage you to read through some of this code and actually see how it does some of these things. We will go through several of these methods um, as we learn more about strings and, and different types of calculations and things like, things like that. Um, so we'll, we'll be filling out this class over the next couple of days in, in little pieces. Um, what we're going to focus on today is the, is the first method that we invoked, which was called get complexity description. Okay? So let's write a Java doc comment header, so a slash star star enter. Um, so let's document what this get complexity description method is going to do. This method that we're about to write returns a string that describes the average time to crack the, cif crack the cipher. We're going to focus on average time because sometimes you get lucky. And like your first guess is the key phrase, right? Sometimes you get really unlucky. And it's not until the final, like, You've gone through all the combinations, and the last possible combination is the key phrase. So we're going to focus on the average time to crack the cipher. Um, and we're going to return a string that describes that in several formats um, based on the specified number of seconds per guess. Because if it takes you two seconds to verify if a given guess key phrase works or not, the average time to crack is going to be a lot faster than if it's going to take you 10 seconds. All right, so we're going to have one parameter. So at param, to practicing our good Java doc stuff here, which you will need to do on our summative lab. So at param, sec per guess, so like seconds per guess, the number of seconds to evaluate each attempt. And then we have at return, because we're actually returning a reference to a new string. So return a string. I'm going to actually copy this description right here. So javadoc can be a little redundant, but it's worth the redundancy because the documentation looks wonderful. So there we go. So we need to write a method header. Um, this is a more complicated method, even though it starts with the word get. Um, it's not as straightforward as our warm-up activity that we had today, um, in that it does take a parameter. There is additional information we need, which is the seconds per guess. Um, and there's a lot more, there's gonna be a lot more to this to build up the string than simply returning the value of an instance variable. But the method header is still like all the other methods we've been writing. We want the visibility to be public um, because we want other code and other classes to be able to call this method. In fact, we already did that in our Caesar Cipher demo class. The return type needs to be a string. It's going to return a reference to a new string. And the name is get complexity description. description. And it takes one parameter type int which we decided to name seconds sec per guess. We're going to do have to do a lot of mathematical operations here. Um, because let's say we do the calculation and it's determined it's going to be 100,000 seconds, right? We're going to want to convert that number into, OK, well, how many minutes is that? Or how many hours is that? Or how many days is that? Which is going to be a lot easier for us to identify with than a really big number of seconds. The tendency when writing code like this 
is as you're doing these conversions, it's just to hard code the numbers in the code. Like, oh, there's 60 seconds in the minute and stuff like that. As you're typing the code, it's going to make sense to you, most likely. But when someone else goes and reads your code later, or when you go back to that code in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you're not going to necessarily remember what the 60 meant. So best practice says, let's not use what we call magic numbers. Magic numbers are literals in our code where it's not clear what they mean. Okay? And we have, we have a better approach. So a little comment block here describing our, our best practice here. So instead of using a magic number, so for example, a magic number might be just like 3.14159. Now, if you saw that in the code, you'd be like, oh, that's pi, right? And things would probably be okay. So maybe that's not the best example. Um, but instead of using a hard-coded literal, a magic number, use constants. And use constants either defined by us or the Java standard library. For example, in the math class, so which is part of the Java standard library, is defined the following line of code, more or less. Public, static, final, double, oh my gosh, so many words, pi equals 3.14159.2654, let's see. We're familiar with visibility, so public means any code can use this variable, this constant variable. We're going to learn what static means in a couple days. Okay, so we're just going to ignore the whole static thing for now. A couple of days, we'll dive into static. Final is the keyword that we're focused on today. Okay, so final is the new keyword we're exploring. When we put a variable in all caps, like pi here, that convention tells us and other humans this is a constant. Java doesn't care about our capital letters. Okay. When we use the keyword final, we're telling the Java compiler that the value of this variable cannot be changed, and the Java compiler will enforce that. So that's really useful. Um, so final is what we're focused on today. Um, so, so, how do, so here's our best practice. Declare a constant with the final keyword. That's the new keyword for today. As a reminder, this is from the last unit, by convention, constants are in all caps with underscores. This is a great example of the difference between a convention, something that helps us humans, like all caps for the constant, and a compiler directive, like final, which is enforced by the compiler, right? So a rule versus a, a guideline. Here's what it looks like. Let's, we'll, we'll do several of these, because we're going to need these as we do our, our conversions. So we're going to start with the word final. That's what tells the Java compiler this is a constant. Our type is going to be int, and I'm going to name this first constant variable seconds for every minute. You may have had or you may have science teachers that use the for every phrase. I'm a big fan of the for every phrase. I think it's a lot clearer than saying like per, seconds per minute. I like seconds for every minute. So it's a little bit longer, but I'm a huge fan. So this is saying there are 60 seconds for every minute. Excellent. All right, let's do another one. Let's do minutes for every hour. There are 60 minutes for every hour. Let's do hours for every day. There are 24 hours for every day. And let's do one more. 
days for every year. Cool, 365. We're ignoring leap years. Um, time and dates are surprisingly complicated. There are huge classes written in part of the Java Standard Library just to help software engineers deal with times and dates. Um, it's remarkable how something that seems so common in everyday life gets so complicated when you have to worry about leap years and daylight savings and time zones and leap seconds and all this other type of stuff. So, very interesting complexity. All right, so here's what's cool. We know that these are constants because they're in all caps, but because we're using the final keyword, if I now to try to change seconds for every minute and assign it a value of 30 instead, the Java compiler won't let that happen. My code won't even compile. I get a really nice error message that says, cannot assign a value to final variable seconds for every minute. This is the power of using the, the final keyword. The Java compiler is now going to make sure that these things remain constants. So I'm going to comment that out because I want our code to compile. But I'll add a little comment here. If we try, whoa, sorry. If we try to change the value, a compiler error will be generated. That's huge. Very nice. Now that we have these constants, where we're headed is we can use these constants um, in the average time, the average number of seconds to crack the cipher and build up a nice string that's, that's more understandable by us. Um, we're going to do that later, but let's at least create a local variable, desc, initialize it to an empty string. This is where we will incrementally build up that nice descriptive string, and eventually we're going to return it, but we just have a bunch of code to add here in the middle first. I just added those two lines, so like the class will actually compare. 